Trustee will come to order. It is 7 p.m. and we are in regular session of our Tuesday, October the 9th council meeting. In just a moment, I'll ask everyone to stand. We'll be led in a prayer by Pastor Joel Keeley of Bar Church, and then remain standing. We'll be led in our pledges to the American flag and the Texas flag by Councilmember Jensen. Please stand. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for our town. And we thank you for the opportunity we have to gather tonight. Pray that our conversations, decisions, and um, just discussions, Father, would just be things that would help our town. And uh, Father, in a time of great division and um, difficulty, we ask for spirit of unity, spirit of kindness, uh, civility, and respect. And I just thank you for the servants that serve, uh, the ones that are sitting up here in the front, uh, the ones that um, have uniforms on that run to trouble when others run from it. Pray protection upon our town. And uh, I thank you for the blessing of, of our town, Father. Bless tonight's meeting. Through Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. It is uh, now time for citizens' presentations. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on any matter, whether or not it is posted on the agenda. The council is not permitted to take action on or discuss any presentations made to the council at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. The council will hear presentations on specific agenda items prior to the council addressing those items. You may speak up to four minutes or a time limit determined by the mayor or presiding officer. To speak during this item, you must complete the speaker's form that includes the topics of your statement. Topics of presentation should be limited to matters over which the council has authority. Holly, did we have someone sign up? Yes, sir, we have Brad Milliken. Mr. Milligan, would you please come forward, state your name and your address into the microphone. You might want to pull it down some. Did you have anybody else that was going to speak uh, with you? Yes, he's getting the card filled out. They didn't realize he needed He doesn't have to if he's with you. Okay, okay. Well, then that's not <laughs> filled out. Uh, uh, my name's Brad Milligan, uh, 2903 uh, Taronga Cove here in Trophy Club. Uh, appreciate y'all letting us uh, come forward. And I, I know that there's... So, uh, you know, a lot of this, you know, kind of falls under various departments, but we're just kind of, you know, hoping to raise awareness with the council on, um, on some desires of, of a lot of people with uh, youth uh, w within the uh, city of Trophy Club. So wh what we want to uh, discuss is the ability to increase the playing divisions within the TCR Youth Baseball Association. Uh, currently, right now, the, uh, there is no ability for kids over the age of 14 to be able to play baseball within uh, t within the TCR organization, uh, which un unfortunately is uh, drives a lot of them to quit playing and, and giving up a, an opportunity for uh, team sports and a lot of the lessons that you can learn through there. Because there's very few of those kids that will actually make the Byron team, which on average is about 15 kids a year from, from the freshman class from talking to Coach Trotter. So there's a lot more kids in, in this uh, town that would like to keep uh, playing. So uh, you know, we're, we're just asking for, for y'all, and you know, in anything I know, there's no discussion and nothing for y'all to be able to vote on tonight, and I completely understand that and, and appreciate that on there. Like I said, we're just trying to raise awareness on it, because we really want to keep the kids here versus going to other cities like South Lake and Keller and wearing their uniforms versus representing the Bobcats out in the communities uh, around here, uh, which unfortunately, you know, it's part of what they've been kind of forced to do in the past. Uh, so, so a little bit of, uh, kind of on what the, uh, you know, landscape looks like, for, you know, locally is with TCR, there's, there's a baseball provided from beginning T-ball, which is about uh, five, six years old, up through uh, 14U, which is tip eight to some, you know, few freshmen, depending on how their birthday falls on there. Uh, practice fields right now that are utilized are with Indy West. And then uh, both sets of fields within Roanoke is part, part of it. Uh, the 14 year and older would, are only able to use right now the uh, no, field number four, which is the one that is right next to uh, Beck Elementary School. 
uh, you, you know, as I mentioned, um, only about 15 freshmen a year make the Byron team, which is a very small number of the kids that uh, come out uh, of the 14 U age. Uh, currently right now there's roughly six teams within 13, 14 U that do, um, that would be able to graduate out, uh, which it, it uh, correlates down to, uh, I thought I had that number in here, I apologize. Uh, oh, went the wrong way. Um, uh, it, it, it's roughly about 50 kids or so, 45, 50 kids that would be graduating into that out uh, for, for, for next year on there. Uh, we understand, you know, with field four, uh, there's roughly about eight practice spots. Uh, so, and we, we understand that that is a big challenge, is finding the practice spots. Uh, but, you know, potentially being able to also work with the organization to talk to Roanoke about one of the fields that they have to be able to expand, expand uh, the ability for having additional uh, spots available. Uh, in, in the past, there has been a uh, re request for TCR to be able to add this in. Um, what we've always been told has been from a, a lack of room. We know this fall, uh, based tr solely on the 14 U age teams, there are two, two spots that are still available at uh, 14 U. Now, we d I did have a conversation with, with uh, Brandon earlier today, and you know, that is something we are going to look to really try to see if, if we can figure out a way to work on, uh, on being able to utilize those for some of, of the older kids on there. Um, th there, there's, there's plenty of support within the parents and the kids that age to be able to, to move on. Um, the, the challenge that we uh, have had in the past is they said, well, you know, we can look at it once we have registrations done, but unfortunately at that time, if, if we wait till Trophy Club is closed, so is Southlake, so is Keller, so is every other organization that's gonna be closed. So they'd be wind up being locked, and out, locked out of all those other cities uh, without knowing what would be sitting here, here waiting for them. So uh, I'm gonna t turn it over to uh, Joe uh, for a little bit more information on here. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe DeCabot. Uh, I've been a resident here of Trophy Club for about five years and I've coached uh, 10U, 12U and 14U uh, really in the rec system and really enjoyed it and I appreciate that opportunity. Uh, one of the things we wanted to make sure we took a look at before we brought this to uh, the city council was uh, if we do develop and we do get the playing spots, do we have other cities or teams we can compete against? And uh, I reached out to all the uh, various cities around the area and in fact, the answer is yes. There's actually quite a few. Um, what the league is you're looking at is called DFW Interlock is where we'd be playing. And some of the teams that make up that are gonna be TCR, or be us, Southlake, uh, Grapevine, Colleyville, and Capel. Uh, right now, only TCR is the only one that doesn't have a team in that uh, for 16U or in fact, 18U and under. So 15, 16, 18U. Uh, a 15U player could technically uh, play for an 18U team, but uh, that's something we have to look at depending upon the number of players we get. Uh, South Lake, Grapevine, Colleyville, uh, as I talked to them, they all have uh, fall teams. In the fall, uh, they have a little less than the number of teams because of football. There's a lot of competition with football, so there's a little bit less. In the spring, they have uh, quite a few more teams. Uh, even reached out, there's also another league called TEBA, and you have uh, cities like Flower Mound, Highland Village, and even reached all the way down to Mansfield that has actually eight teams uh, in the TEBA. Uh, so we do definitely have plenty of competition out there for these kids. Uh, next thing we want to take a look at is if we got the competition, is there interest from the local city? Do the kids that once they get into high school, are they still interested in playing baseball? And the answer is yes. One of our biggest concerns is when these kids get to high school, only a few of them are going to make the high school team. They, there's cuts on that team, and about uh, 10 to 12 make the team. That's it. That's not many slots for our kids that are moving up into uh, 15, 16 U. So with that being said, we reached out to the parents from the uh, last fall, and we got a response from about 20 parents. Uh, that are interested, and that's just out of the rec league. That doesn't include other kids that might join because they heard the league is up and running for 15-16U. Uh, uh, so there's definitely uh, interest with the kids uh, for that, so we wanna make sure that uh, they are available and they are willing to uh, play. Uh, when you look at the final analysis on this, uh, what we've looked at uh, between having cities available to play, that's there, the players are there to play, the field based on what we're seeing right now with the information we've gathered, there is field availability. Uh, I know uh, there's been a little bit of communication breakdown. Some of it was because of transition to the previous board. Uh, so we're trying to work that out and get to the point where we can uh, work this out between ourselves, but we did want to bring it to the attention of the city council. Uh, key thing I want to take away from this, this is a, in my mind, this is a pivotal point in these young kids' lives. This is young adulthood. Uh, this is time when they get idle time on their hands. If your kids are anything like mine, that idle time means things like video games, which I really don't enjoy. Even worse things, you're talking about alcohol and drugs, which none of us want to see them. And sports have proven an activity to keep that idle time away from our kids and give them something to participate in and get them away from that. So I believe that's a key piece to uh, keep our kids away from that. So uh, I just want to make sure between uh, uh, Brad and myself, we brought this to the city uh, or the attention of the city council uh, to take this in consideration so that we can get the uh, rec team for uh, 15, 16, and potentially 18 years. 
That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much for coming. Do we have anyone else in the audience wishing to speak at this time? Don't believe anybody filled out a speaker's form, so we will move on to announcements and reports. Item number one, receive town manager classes update and provide input regarding the following. Community night, early voting, Citizens Fire Academy graduation, and Loop Road. Mr. Class. Uh, evening, Mayor and Council. I'd like to invite the Council and our residents to join us for our 2018 Community Night, uh, which will take place this Saturday, October 13th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Harmony Park. Uh, this year, the event will feature many children's activities uh, to include a trackless train, face painting, free in and out burgers while the supply lasts, and Kona ice. Uh, the evening will culminate with a movie in the park for our residents who are encouraged to bring their blankets, chairs, and their favorite snacks. And Tony has told me that the uh, movie will be Hotel Transylvania this year. Uh, additional information on Community Night uh, can be found on our website at uh, www.tcparks.org. Uh, with regard to early voting, uh, that will take place uh, it's upcoming uh, November 6th for the number, I'm sorry, for the November 6th elections. The early voting will take place on Monday, October 22nd, and run through Friday on November 2nd. The, um, Closest early voting site for our Denton County voters will be at the Roanoke Public Library, and for our Tarrant County voters, it will be at the South Lake Town Hall. The times and locations uh, will also be posted on our website. The uh, Fire Academy, I'm, I'm very proud uh, to announce that on October 4th, nine of our uh, community members graduated from the Trophy Club uh, Fire Department Citizens Academy. And although this is not our first academy, it's the first of a kind. Uh, Chief uh, revamped the academy quite a bit this year. Uh, the graduates received training on fire extinguisher use, airway management. They performed actual IV injections on mannequins. I happened to be there for that night. That was interesting. Uh, the graduates also witnessed the landing of a care flight helicopter. They joined our firefighters in actual ride-alongs. They participated in multiple events, including the dismantling of a car with the jaws of life, uh, climbing all the way up to the top of our aerial ladder, and they uh, culminated uh, the academy by entering a live fire training scenario wearing full bunker gear and an air pack to extinguish the fire. Um, by all accounts, the academy was a huge success uh, as evidenced by all the new relationships that the fire department was able to um, have with the, uh, the academy uh, graduates. I want to personally recognize Chief Carroll and the firefighters that we have here with us uh, and say, you know, thank them personally for uh, all their efforts with the academy. Again, it was a huge success. I'm just very proud of everything that they do. Uh, the fire department's already planning on the next academy, which will take place next uh, fall and looks forward to building on this year's success. So again, thank you all for everything that you did. And then lastly, I want to give you a little bit of an update on Loop Road, which I know uh, everybody seems to be very interested in, uh, let you know kind of what uh, David and my efforts have been recently. Uh, the town attorney has sent a letter, a uh, formal letter of request to the Corps of Engineer uh, seeking uh, a review of the 2014 Loop Road denial. And the request for the formal review is based upon some research that uh, David did, um, but it's basically, um, uh, looking at the current state of the town's population and development, which necessitates, in our opinion, uh, entry and exit additional options for entry and exit. Additionally, uh, we're looking at the public safety aspect and emergency access considerations, and that was detailed in the letter. And also, um, a recent identification of additional easements uh, to and from the wastewater treatment facility that uh, we were able to determine. Uh, that already crossed the environmentally sensitive area. And so that was another basis for um, the request for them to uh, look at uh, the original denial. In addition, David and I met with um, Congressman uh, Burgess's staff, Eric With and Melanie Torres, regarding the same denial letter from 2014. We expressed our interest to them in pursuing the matter at a federal level as well. 
Uh, we've since provided the congressman's staff with all responsive documents, and they've agreed to forward a letter to the Corps of Engineers and initiate a congressional inquiry on our behalf. So Dave and I feel that um, kind of the simultaneous uh, bottom to top approach that we're doing locally and the top to bottom approach at the federal level will give us our best opportunity to at least resolve this in some form or fashion. And we're awaiting responses uh, from the Corps of Engineer as we speak. So with that said, I'd be happy to take any questions. Council, any questions on these matters? Seeing no one seeking to speak, thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. It is time for our consent agenda. All matters listed as consent agenda are considered to be routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items. If discussion is <coughs> desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Council, I wish to pull item number six. We have a representative to re receive that. Anybody else want to pull any of the items two through five? Seeing no one wishing to speak, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items two through five. I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda items two through five. Second. All right, so I have a motion and a second. All in favor, show your hands. It is unanimous. We will then go to item six, which uh, I pulled, and is considered to take appropriate action um, regarding a proclamation of the town council recognizing October 2018 is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Trophy Club and providing an effective date. Uh, I'll recognize Councilmember Schaffner for a motion. I'm for reading the proclamation and a motion. Whereas for the past 37 years, Denton County Friends of the Family has provided compassionate, comprehensive service to those impacted by rape, sexual abuse, and domestic violence in the Denton community while partnering with the community to promote safety, hope, healing, justice, and prevention. And whereas by working together, shelters, affili affiliated programs, municipalities, and concerned individuals can change social attitudes about and the response to intimate partner violence. And whereas all persons have the right to live without fear, abuse, or oppression. And whereas one in three Texans will experience domestic violence in their lifetimes. And whereas Denton County Friends of the Family received more than 3,000 crisis calls from victims of domestic violence and provided 7,801 days of emergency shelter to women and children in the past year. And whereas the Denton County Friends of the Family individuals and groups with over 10,000 hours of service through counseling, advocacy, case management, and support services, and whereas domestic violence is not confined to any specific group or people, but affects people of all races, backgrounds, economic levels, education levels, family structures, ages, and religions, and whereas the crime of domestic violence violates members of the community's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity in the form of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, religious, and economic abuse, and whereas advocates, professionals, volunteers, and community members concerned with domestic violence will devote the month of October to raising awareness about the causes, interventions, and preventions of this devastating crime. Now, therefore, Mayor Nick Sanders, in conjunction with the Town Council of the Town of Trophy Club, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 2018 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Trophy Club, Texas. And with that, I make a motion to approve uh, this proclamation. Do you have a second? Second. All right, it is moved and seconded. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna recognize Kim Shields to come forward to our lectern. She is the development coordinator of Denton County Friends of the Family to say a few words to us. Hi, y'all. I brought some pamphlets to hand out, is that okay? Yes, it is. Okay, that's awesome. Good evening, thank you so much for allowing me to come out and speak to y'all today. Like you mentioned, Mayor, I am Kim Shields with Ditton County Friends of the Family. We provide compassionate, comprehensive services to those impacted by rape, sexual abuse, and domestic violence while partnering with our community to promote safety, hope, healing, prevention, and justice. We have actually been up and running since 1980 now, and still to this day, we are the sole provider of full services for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault, and we serve as the official rape crisis center of Denton County. 
Um, we have a host of services, and we really built those services to meet victims where they are because we know that there are a lot of barriers to overcoming an abusive relationship and being able to escape that relationship. So we kind of built those services to make sure that we help them overcome those barriers. So we're best known for our emergency shelter. We house 35 women and children at a time, and unfortunately, we're at capacity almost all year long. Um, that has been um, one of our best services that we're able to offer for those women that just need to leave in the middle of the night with nothing but the clothes on their back. We also offer outreach counseling for both adults and children. For children, we have play therapy. So, you know, kids, they don't really speak one-on-one -on -one in dialogue like we do. They communicate through play, and we're able to help them with that through our play therapy services. We also have activity therapy for teens. We have a sexual assault crisis team that will go to the hospital with victims of sexual assault and be there just as their support system uh, while they're doing like the rape kit exam and having to talk to the police and everything that happens after a sexual assault as well. Um, we also have a food pantry to help our clients alleviate any financial burden that they have to go buy groceries. They don't have to worry about not being able to put food on the table for their kids. So we have a whole host of services that we're able to offer victims. Nationally, one in four women are victims of domestic violence. And just in August alone, from our agency, we served 569 adults, 448 children. We had 25 adults and 20 children that stayed in our emergency shelter. We answered 239 crisis line calls on our 24-hour hotline. And of all of those, 243 of the people that walked through our doors were brand new people walking through our doors for the first time. So unfortunately, those numbers are very high. But what we know is that the way to get them down is through community education and public intervention and public education. So this tonight, this proclamation is a really big deal for the people in the community that may be victims of domestic violence, just to know that their town council heard them, believed them, and is devoting an entire month just to educate about this issue. Until you're in that position, you really don't know how big of a deal that is. But it's really, really wonderful, and you've done a really great thing, and we are just so appreciative of all that y'all have done. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank coming you. tonight, Kim. Thank you. I'll call for vote. All those approving the proclamation, show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It is unanimous. Uh, Kim, do you want to join me back at the flag? We're going to take a picture for a moment. Item number seven, consider take appropriate action regarding a proclamation of the town council recognized in October 2018 as Bully and Prevention Awareness Month and Trophy Club and providing an effective date. It's proclamation 2018-13. Alicia, would you read it and move it, please? Whereas bullying is the repeated physical, verbal, sexual, and or emotional harm or intimidation intentionally directed at a person or group of people, and whereas bullying occurs in neighborhoods, playgrounds, schools, and through technology such as the internet and cell phones, and whereas bullying is the most common form of violence affecting millions of U.S. children and adolescents with 28% of students in grades 6 through 12 having experienced bullying, approximately 30% of students admitting to bullying others, and 70.6% of young people say they have seen bullying in their schools, and whereas children who bully or at a greater risk of engaging in more serious violent behaviors and children who witness bullying often feel less secure, more fearful, intimidated, and whereas researchers and child psychologists believe educating our children while they are young helps them to cope with adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, and significant sources of stress, and whereas more than 50% of bullying situations stop within 10 seconds when a peer intervenes and school-based bullying prevention programs 
decreased bullying by up to 25%. And whereas studies show adults can help prevent bullying by talking about bullying, modeling kindness and respect, and encouraging children to get help when they and or others are involved in bullying. Now therefore I, Mayor Scenic Sanders, in conjunction with the Town Council of the Town of Trophy Club, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 2018 as Bullying Prevention Awareness Month. Town of Trophy Club schools, students, parents, recreation programs, religious institutions, and community organizations are encouraged to engage in a variety of awareness and prevention activities designed to make our communities safer for all children and adolescents. I move to approve as read. And do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Roe. All in favor, show your hands. It is unanimous. Alicia, would you like to come back here? We'll get a picture. Oh, sure. Pictures of both of them at the same time. <laughs> Why didn't he ask you to go, Tim? And just to further validate on what Kim had mentioned earlier, these proclamations are important for awareness to show our community that we do care and that we do want to spread the word and get these issues out in the open for people to talk about. I know, you know, we do a lot of these proclamations and you hear them over and over, but they really are important for our community. So thank you very much for indulging us. All right, item number eight. Consider take appropriate action regarding a proclamation of the town council recognizing October 17 through 13, 2018 as Fire Prevention Week and Trophy Club and providing an effective way a week. This time I would uh, call on Mayor Pro Tem Schaffner to read the proclamation and make a motion. Whereas the town of Trophy Club is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting the town of Trophy Club, and whereas U.S. fire departments responded to 379,000 home fires in 2017, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and whereas U.S. home fires resulted in 2,630 civilian deaths in 2017, representing the majority, 77% of all U.S. fire deaths, and whereas newer homes are built with lightweight materials that burn faster than older home constructions, and whereas many of today's products and furnishings uh, produce toxic gases and smoke when burned, making it impossible to see and breathe within moments, and whereas these conditions contribute to a much smaller window of time for people to escape a home fire safely, with people having as little as one to two minutes to escape from the time the smoke alarm sounds, and whereas a home fire escape plan provides the skill set and know-how to quickly and safely escape a home fire situation, and whereas a home fire escape plan includes two exits from every room in the home, a path to the outside from each exit, smoke alarms in all required locations, and a meeting place outside where everyone in the home will meet upon exiting, and whereas home fire escape plans should be developed by all members of the household, and whereas practicing a home fire escape plan twice a year ensures that everyone in the household knows what to do in a real fire situation, and whereas the Town of Trophy Club's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education, and whereas the Town of Trophy Club's residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes, and whereas the 2018 Fire Prevention Week theme, look, listen, learn, be aware, fire can happen anywhere, effectively serves to educate the public about the vital importance of developing a home fire escape plan with all members of the household and practicing it twice a year. Now therefore, Mayor C. Nick Sanders, in conjunction with the Great Town Council of the Town of Trophy Club, Texas, do hereby proclaim October 7 through 13, 2018 as Fire Prevention Week in Trophy Club, Texas. And I make a motion to approve this proclamation. Second. Second. 
<laughs> so I have a motion about Schaffner, second by Jensen. As amended. <laughs> as amended while read. <laughs> All in favor, show your hands. All opposed, same sign, it is unanimous. Now, Lieutenant Beck, would you come forward with your group of firefighters tonight? Come up to the podium. Chief, would you come up also, please? Now, I was hoping that I could say this was shift A, B, or C. It's A. You stole my thunder. <laughs> oh. I was going to guess because I wasn't sure which shift, and I figured, you know, I had a 30% chance of being right. <laughs> so, so, as it is, that's what I was going to say. Is okay. uh, So, guys, thank you very much for everything that you do, and appreciate that. Uh, always know that when you go out, um, I get phone calls from people that compliment what you do. I don't keep track of how many times that I've had a citizen say that if it hadn't been for the quick action and thorough action and judgment of you and your team, um, people would not have been alive. And so if they don't tell you uh, on behalf of myself and the town council, we really appreciate everything you do. Chief, you also. Anybody want to say anything? This is your chance. Thank you. Is that it? <laughs> All right. So we have approved it. We're going to go back to that flag and get a picture if we can. Item number nine, receive an update from Greater Northwest Soccer Association regarding their current season. Uh, Tony, you have the... Yes, good evening, evening. Mayor, Council. Uh, Mr. Matt Tibbetts will be here to update uh, on behalf of the Greater Northwest Soccer Association. I do plan on meeting with the sports uh, subcommittee and the sports associations at a later date to discuss any specific recommendations made this evening. Thank you. Matt? Thank you, Mayor and Council. So I wanted to go through just a brief overview and then please ask questions as we go along. So for the fall season, we have 975 youth players, of which 40% of those live in Trophy Club, 29% live in Roanoke, and 11% live, live in Justin. So roughly that's 80% of our players are in the, what you consider the prime Northwest Independent School District area. Then we have an additional 20% out of that, including areas that also feed into Northwest, such as North Lake, such as, um, where's, lost my place, uh, Dish. That's our, that's our next big, we're gonna really go after Dish. I think there's a lot of people there. Uh, Bartonville and some, and then Rome are some other areas that we feed into. We currently have 99 youth teams, ranging from U4 or the three-year-olds, which if you've ever come out to watch is a lot of fun. One falls and the entire rest of the field falls with them, up to U19 in the boys group. We currently have 31 of our players that actually play at the high school. So we're doing a good job. Again, as I've told you before, my 
wishes and my responsibility is to make sure that we offer for not only Trophy Club residents, but all of our membership the opportunity to have the ability to play at the high school level if they are willing to put the time and effort and work into that. Um, real quick, just also want to introduce Jason Hoffman, who is our U9, U10 commissioner and is also a Trophy Club resident. I'm also a Trophy Club resident, sorry, I always forget to do this. 211 Durango Drive, I've been here since 1995. <clears throat> and then I'd also like to just really uh, quick also recognize another Trophy Club resident, Margaret Anderson, she is our registrar. Uh, and she puts in 300 to 400 hours a year easily of volunteer work. So she is a she is a peach, and uh, we are lucky to have her as a citizen of this town. <clears throat> the other things I wanted to point out real quick is uh, as far as the game fields, Justin, Harmony Park, and Roanoke are our primary field positions as far as games. We're playing in Justin every weekend, and then Roanoke and Harmony Park tend to alternate so this year based on all the rainfall that we've had it looks like we're going to have about four weekends at each facility with Roanoke handling all of our makeup games during the weeknights primarily because of the fact that um, we use Harmony Park as a primary practice facility during the week. The plans moving forward sorry <clears throat> for what we're looking to do is I've met with Tony and Marvin with regards to the new homes that are in Trophy Club at the Harmony Park facility. And we have that nice canopy running along the eastern area to protect the homes. There are a few open patches if we look on the south side. And so to make sure that we are providing coverage for those new homeowners, and so they you know limit noise, limit lights, as well as soccer balls going into their backyard, we're looking at purchasing four to five Oaks, is that Oaks that will be in similar to do that. So that's one thing we want to do to add to the beautification and also protection of the residents. Uh, you guys are well familiar as well with what we're doing with the lights. So big thank you to Tony and Marvin and Melinda on the team doing a fantastic job for us on that. And I think that will be a great asset to the town that we're happy to participate in paying a portion of. And again, will be good asset to what the uh, park has. <clears throat> and then thirdly, we were in talks with uh, looking at the concession area and looking at ways to make some improvements on that. As I said, is there things we can do to somewhat industrialize it so that random people that come in and want to yank on things can't and it makes it as good as it, as it can be for our, not only the soccer players, but everybody else that uses the park. So that's another thing we'll be looking at. And I know the, the Boy Scouts have mentioned that they would be happy to also help with that as part of their project. And then the last thing I'll, I'll bring up is uh, just gender breakout, I forget to do that. So we are at 58% males and 42% females participating in soccer. Thank you, Matt. Council, any questions? I don't have a question. Um, I, I just want to say thanks to uh, Matt and all the Soccer Association. My my kids have played from U4 when they just fell like dominoes, like uh, Matt said. But uh, they're, they're still playing. It's I guess they're in U11 maybe now. Uh, but I just want to say thanks because it's, it's made a big impact on their lives and, and uh, they've made great friends and, and it's always a good experience. Thank you. Appreciate Thank that. You. Anybody else? <coughs> Thank you very much for coming tonight and providing you, the update. Uh, and hopefully people can see this on Facebook Live or record it later. And if they want more information, they could contact you. Thank you, sir. So thank you very much thank for you. coming. Appreciate it. Uh, item number 10, receive an update from the Trophy Club Roanoke Youth Baseball Association regarding their current season. Tony, you have the floor. Yes, Mayor Council, Mr. Brandon Hennig is here to provide an update for the Trophy Club Roanoke Youth Baseball Association. Brandon? Thank you. Thank you, Council, Mayor. Thank you for having us tonight. Quick update, we have a lot of rain, no baseball. <laughs> so, <laughs> any questions? No, I'm just joking. Um, we have approximately uh, 495 um, current players that are registered uh, here with us uh, this fall. We had a very successful uh, spring. It was down a little, maybe about 40 players compared to 2017, uh, but the 495 players that we have registered this fall is up approximately 33 
new players. So that's always good to see, and especially when you're competing against football, uh, which is always, uh, you know, the, the hot sport in the fall. We always uh, welcome more players and, uh, and more um, uh, opportunity to, uh, to get them out on the field. Uh, out of those 495 rec players, uh, 208 of those do live here in Trophy Club. Uh, 75 of those players are out of Roanoke, leaving uh, the remaining uh, players on the list in surrounding areas from Fort Worth to Hazlitt. We even have one that was registered in Indiana. So I don't know exactly, uh, maybe they registered in Indiana and they moved here, but uh, they're on the list. That's the furthest player that we've ever recorded. Um, Recruiting outside the state. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I would like to give a, a, a I guess a, a round of applause to Tony and his boys. Uh, we are supposed to be in our fourth week of season and we've had one weekend um, worth of worth of uh, due to the rain this we love it we love the rain but it is a, a little frustrating at times but Tony and his team have just uh, been open arms on trying to get these fields put together for us playable for us uh, and and it's just been so much easier on a communication basis with Marvin and Tony just being up front and just saying you know we, we tried our best we just can't do it and we're walking there they're listening to the to our staff uh, which we, um, in September 1st, we announced our new board. Uh, so I did give Joe and Brad my, my word that the, uh, the item at hand will be, we will be looked at personally and uh, hopefully taken care of. Um, I think it was a transition issue between a new board and an old board and it just got overlooked. So I'm, I'm very confident that uh, we'll be working together and getting that uh, all, all put away behind us. Council, any questions, comments? All right, thank you very much for coming and thank giving you. us an update. You bet. Thank you. Item number 11, receive an update from the Bobcat Youth Football Organization regarding their current season. Tony. Yes, Mayor Council, Mr. Darrell Fowler is here to provide an update for the Bobcat Youth Football Organization. How are you all doing? Thank you. Good. Um, as Tony said, my name is Darrell Fowler. I'm the president of the uh, youth football organization and cheer. It's actually both. So we have um, over 300 kids involved right now with youth football from kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, one thing about our league is we are, all of our kids are aligned with Byron Nelson High School. So we have all of the kids that play in the organization have to, uh, at this point, would go to Byron Nelson High School. So. Um, that puts about 70% of our kids living in Trophy Club. If you live, obviously, in the Roanoke schools down 170, that still feed into Byron Nelson. Um, but that's how our league's aligned. We play in a league with um, Argyle, Lantana, Coppell, Colleyville, Grapevine, Southlake, and then uh, Northwest has a team out uh, west that plays out at the NIS NISD. So we are all um, geography based. So all of our kids in those communities too go to those schools. And so we play exclusively against those communities um, every Saturday. We play our games at um, high school um, and sub varsity fields. Um, so rain's okay. We can play in the rain. Unfortunately, baseball no can't. But we play every Saturday, um, usually starting about eight or nine in the morning through mid afternoon. Um, we practice at Indy, and so we uh, use Indy Field, uh, the big grass field across from the high school Monday through Thursdays. Um, we have a great relationship. We do a lot of work with the high school. I have a, I have a personal and a professional relationship with Coach Pride. Um, their coaches do clinics for our coaches. Um, we spend time with them to understand what their vision is, obviously relate that down to the kids um, at the youth level. Um, primarily, obviously, teaching safety as well as um, just the love of football. And I think our relationship and continued support of the high school program is huge. We have youth night um, coming up in two weeks for both football and cheer at the high school game. And so our goal is to be involved in ingrained in the community. We participate as an organization in the 4th of July parade and the homecoming parade. So we do floats. Every team does a uh, flow with the cheerleaders. So I think for us, um, we are currently the second largest organization amongst the cities that I said earlier, next to South Lake. Uh, our numbers are actually up um, compared to some of the others. So uh, we're excited about uh, the community and what we're doing here uh, locally to build just the awareness of football um, as well as cheer. So 
we will run until mid-November, and then we are we're done. We don't do a spring; we only do fall league. So, thank you. You're welcome. Council, any questions? Yeah, I wanted to yes, ask. You mentioned line. practicing at <clears throat> sorry, practicing at Independence Park. Do you guys have any other practice resources besides that one spot? We do. We, w if it rains like today, we practice um, at the turf fields at the high school okay. that are uh, the ones that don't have lights, and so we're a little limited with that. Um, but we have a relationship with, um, I have a relationship with Joel at NISD, and we work with them on usage of those two fields. Cool. I would just encourage you guys, obviously the soccer and baseball guys that we just heard from, we've had relationships with those organizations for a long time, and I know yeah. you guys are newer, so as you continue to mature, you know, if there's things that you need from us to help formalize absolutely. agreements or whatever is yeah. necessary, you know, work with staff, and we're, you know, we're ready to work with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. yeah. Philip, you have some questions? Yeah, no, it's not about football, uh, but basically about all the associations. I, I just want to, you are kind of like us. You, you make a lot of money, you know, doing this, this kind of thing. <laughs> and so <laughs> we make nothing like you. Right. You make nothing. And so I, I just want to say that we appreciate, you know, these numbers are, are pretty big just for trophy club kids. Yeah. And uh, and so I want to say thank you to not only not only you, but all of your uh, board members, all of your volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of energy, takes a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want you to know that we appreciate it. And, and we do hear feedback from the community about the positive things that are going on. So we just want to say thanks. Yeah, thank you. Alicia? Same thing. I've spent time with all three organizations, mostly with um, the football, with my boys. And again, just to echo what Philip said, thank you guys so much for the coaches, the admin, the team moms, all the volunteers that make it happen. I think that is one of the highlights of our community are the recreational sports and our activities we provide. And I know how much time and effort goes into it, and it is much appreciated by everyone. So thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for coming tonight, sir. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. You should have br brought suckers, Matt, and we would have. Snacks. Where are the snacks? <laughs> <laughs> They have a, uh, soccer has a, a uh, kind of a deal going where if you put a sucker in it, don't, don't yell at the ref referees and oh. everything. So it's been pretty good. <laughs> My wife, on the other hand, yeah, you got to watch her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Consider take appropriate action regarding a town maintained property and acquisition potential oh. for adjacent. Yes. Oh, you oh this was for this. Okay. Look. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, potential for adjacent property owners. Uh, item number 12, uh, town manager class. Uh, Mayor and council, just by way of background, uh, during the April 24th meeting, um, council directed staff to um, reach out to the residents of affected properties in the Woods subdivision and also along Indian Creek Drive um, to seek to acquire uh, property adjacent to the roads uh, in exchange for continued maintenance of the properties or to set up a timeline whereby the uh, property owners would take uh, back the maintenance responsibilities for their individual properties. Uh, council also agreed at that time to pay all legal surveying and platting fees associated with an acquisition of the property should the property owners want to transfer the property to the town. And following that meeting, I sent letters out to all the homeowners uh, we set up a uh, town hall style meeting where we met. Uh, we talked about all the issues involved with a potential acquisition of the properties or the return of the maintenance uh, to the, the residents. Uh, we also gave uh, uh, several months uh, time to make decisions on whether or not uh, they wanted to let the town acquire the properties or continue the maintenance themselves. Uh, at no time during the meeting uh, with the uh, property owners or afterwards has any of the property owners expressed any interest in transferring the property to the town. And so absent any kind of uh, council direction to the contrary, it would be my intention at some point in time to send letters out and potentially uh, turn the maintenance back over to the residents, uh, absent other direction from council. Uh, I'm not here to take any questions that you might have. I've also included um, in, within your packets at the dais um, a cost breakdown uh, reflective of the last two years expenses that the town has incurred 
uh, with regard to the maintenance of the property, of the woods subdivision, and also uh, the maintenance costs associated with uh, the residences along uh, Indian Creek Drive. Thank you. Eric, you have the floor. Yes, sir. I think our initial intentions were the right ones. Uh, we're trying to do, we're trying to do the proper thing with the tax money and um, of the residents. Uh, with that being said, I have a change, I had a change of heart and uh, based on the location of the properties being major thoroughfares of the town, I make a motion to cease attempting to acquire the property and direct Parks and Rec staff to continue mowing and maintaining as they have in the past. I'll second that. I have a motion by Councilmember Jensen, a second by Councilmember Lamont. And as I understand the motion to cease uh, pursuing the action of a acquisition of the property and to have Park and Recs go back and pick up the maintenance and water. Uh, did you say watering? I don't know if you did. I said mowing and maintenance, so I would assume if, if they're watering, that's part of the, the regular schedule of maintenance. All right. <clears throat> All right, any further discussion? So, um, Rylan, you, you want the floor? I could have let you talk. You took yourself off the list. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay, just yeah. making sure. Um, so, uh, I, I think I said in one of our previous meetings that I didn't really – it wasn't about the cost of the maintenance for me. I just wanted to make sure that everything on paper matched what we were doing, right? Um, in looking at, uh, it's important, I think, to, to point out that originally <clears throat> this all started three and a half years ago. Um, Parks Department brought to us a, a, a stack of properties that were had various ownership that we were maintaining. And in this particular one that we're discussing tonight, um, the report we were given indicated that the entire um, the entire portion of that land there between that brick wall and the curb was owned by the, by the homeowners. Um, and we've been obviously digging and digging and digging, and as staff knows, we've been digging more today and looking at surveys and plats together and, com and comparing the two. It really only boils down to a few feet. A group, good portion of that is actually our right of way. Um, since there's no since there's no access for the for the homeowner, and it's mostly ours. Um, I don't have an issue with, with, with what's been motioned here. Um, I, I would like to, I would like to at least keep an open ear to the fact that there's a portion of that, that we're going to be operating on that is private, even though it may only be a few feet, just from a legal standpoint, make sure that we're covered. If, if there was any adverse event to occur, that there's no ambiguity about, I mean, I have no idea what that might mean, but I would just, uh, I would just hope that, I would just hope that we at least sort of internally vet that and if there's any further action we need to take to, to clear that up so that our homeowners aren't worried about that or vice versa, that we can, we can make sure that's put to bed so that in 20 years, when nobody who's here tonight is around, we know what's going on. Philip. Yeah, and I agree, and just to kind of expand upon what Ryland said, this, this started back on March the 10th of 2015, and we were presented that night with a uh, an RFP for the the uh, outsourcing all the maintenance on the medians and uh, all the the land that we maintain. And one of the one of the uh, objects, uh, one of the displays that we had that night was the wood subdivision, and it was it was presented to us that both properties are owned by the adjacent landowners. So we even clarified uh, at that meeting, so, so we don't own this property. And we were told, nope, the town has no ownership of that. Well, again, like Rollins says, even, even trying to dig and find out the plat says one thing. And anyway, uh, we finally narrowed it down to there is a right of way on uh, the woods and on Indian Creek. And so that changes, you know, everything from what we were presented by the staff at that time, not, not the staff that's here now. Uh, the staff at that time uh, had that totally uh, backwards from, from what is actual. And so, uh, so it's a different scenario in my mind. And so I, I agree, I would support the motion. Uh, I have a question, Tom, uh, in this, the um, 
irrigation control box is actually on private property behind a wall and a gate. What are your plans to deal with that or has that been discussed? Yeah, based upon uh, what I think is council direction, we would move that box into uh, the, the other side of the wall where we wouldn't have to uh, go on to the uh, private property to make the adjustments and that type of thing. It's a fairly easy fix. Is that citizen here tonight that has that property? You are, sir? And is that okay with you? All right, good. And what's your name? Alan Strickland. Alan Strickland? Thank you, Alan. Um, and I think, if my memory is correct, the water meter is actually um, down the end of that right away, close to the fire station. Is that where the water meter is? I believe that's correct. It's actually associated with another address on, uh, I think, um, Jennifer Court, um, but, it, but it is our water meter. What's that address on Jennifer, do we know? Okay. All right. So it sounds like we've got everything covered here. Are there any questions about this motion or clarification that's needed? Greg's name's up. I just want to clarify I'm sorry, that Greg, Eric thank changed you. his mind. You know, when I grew up, my nickname was The Shadow because of Lamont Cranston, the radio show. Uh, but obviously yeah, there's something know. going on yeah, with this that no one ever sees my name. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> we always point out when I say something. Anyway. Okay. I, then we go to the next person. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you had your chance. Yeah. I, uh, this goes back to the late 90s when there was an organization called the CIA. Don't ask me what the acronym is or was. Community Improvement Association. There you go. Uh, Jim Walsh was the last president. Well, that's what they said anyway. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Donna Welsh was the, act, the at the time the uh, town I'm manager. I reached out to both of them. They both knew that there was some type of agreement. Couldn't be specific as far as the properties. Uh, Jim acknowledged that there was a, they were spending $1,000 a month at the time to handle all these properties. So I think there's precedent there, and uh, I, I, I support the uh, motion. All right, anyone else? Seeing no one wish to speak, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion, show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It is unanimous. It does pass. All right. Thank I didn't you. have uh, any citizens sign up to speak, although there were some here. So if you wanted to speak, I would let you come forward and speak if citizens came just to speak. All right. Thank you for attendance. Item number 13. Discussion of items for future agenda to include agenda items for consideration on the October 23rd council agenda and items from town council future agenda list. Item A uh, refers to item number eight from the future agenda list. Uh, discussion to take appropriate action regarding trophy club park master plan. And so, Tony, are you going to give us some information? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Tonight we'll be providing a update on our trophy club master plan that uh, we've been working on. I just want to say we, this is not finalized. Um, one of our main objectives continues to be providing recreational needs for our, our community as it continues to grow. Um, some of those activities include things like fishing, uh, offering volunteer opportunities, and um, nature trails for our community to, to enjoy. Some of the event, these are all the events that uh, we are uh, currently holding over at uh, Trophy Club Park. Something new we're going to try uh, next year is park cleanup days, and that ties into keeping Trophy Club beautiful. These are just some of the projects that uh, we currently are working on. One thing I did want to mention is our Ventic machine now has the option to select whether you are a resident or non resident. This will help us in the future. Um, decide on how to move forward on offering our residents a discount. So phase one of our master plan, again, this is not finalized. This is after uh, we meet with the core and obviously with our subcommittee and park board uh, subcommittee as well. Um, it was recently discovered $144,000 was awarded for Trophy Club Park. Um, and in that uh, award, um, these projects some of these projects are a new pipe rail fence for the outlining of the elevated motocross track. 
um, an extension and leveling of pre-existing parking lots, uh, construction of additional pavilions, and new park signage throughout the park. And to give you somewhat of a better idea, this is our concept plan that we, or map that we are currently working on with Tignall and Perkins. The red shaded area represents the new side-by-side -side track that we would like to um, uh, build at some point in the near future, probably a FY 1920. Uh, this, can, this will continue to be our kitty track. Currently, this is our the pipe rail fence that we would like to install uh, with the awarded grant. Uh, and then the rest of the motocross area will remain the same. Something different that we would like to do is offer an adult beginner track here in the orange shaded area as well to attract new riders. And this will help with, you know, alleviate any safety issues and mixing with experienced riders with, with beginner riders, so. Phase two, FY19, as I mentioned, this would be uh, the side-by-side -side construction, uh, redesigning trails, uh, various trails and tracks one and two. Tracks one and two represent the kitty track and the adult beginner track. And staff continues to research for various grants to um, um, uh, replace the asphalt um, road that we currently have, which is in terrible shape. Um, the street department uh, is going to assist us to replace the patch job, but we're in the beginning, uh, the near the guard shack to, uh, in the meantime, while we search for various grants at the moment. That concludes the presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. If, Tony, I have a question. If you would go back to the slide that showed all the colored areas for the map. The map. There you go. Okay. So um, notice the dashed trail that uh, goes along the lake. Yes, sir. The peninsula. Yes. And to that beach area. I understand, of course, the beach area comes and goes based on the height. Correct, on the flooding, yes. Flood. But I had a citizen tell me the other day that it's so overgrown that you really couldn't tell where the trail is. Are we maintaining that or going to try to maintain that? Correct, and uh, I've instructed staff to wait until um, everything goes dormant uh, this season and we will uh, create a trail towards that beach area once again, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Philip. So the 144,000, we have received that or not received that? We have not, The only, we have to uh, perform an archeological survey first once that is performed and completed, that gets turned over to the Texas Park and Wildlife. They give us the okay and, and it's all downhill from there. And is it a 80-20 or is it full? It's an 80-20 right now, correct. Okay. Yes, sir. And, uh, and by the way, the 20% can be used with manpower as well. We don't have to physically do funds, so. Gotcha. We can do a lot of that in-house. So so this is the this is what you're presenting to the to the core or? Yes, sir. Or I would like to. I mean, because we're not really looking at the master plan. Right, well, this is, this is, this is what I have presented to the core. And um, one of the things that I, well, that was recommended was a fishing dock, if you recall. Mm -hmm. They completely changed their mind on that. They do not want the fishing dock any longer. So they want to keep this more natural, more nature related, more, they want people to go out there and run and, and do triathlons if possible. and keep it more nature related as opposed to anything sports related. So have, have, have you, and, and Eric may talk about this when he has the floor, but have, have you talked about like mountain bikes and, and moving horses on either side? And I did present the mountain bike trail to the core and they, they do not support it. They don't support it? No, sir. So th are, are there any bike trails at all in the, in the park? Currently, no, sir, okay. no. So, so let me ask you this: What is what's your long-term plans for that park and that pavilion area? Do you have any? In the pavilion area? Yeah. The, the yeah, that nature. Yes. What so currently, call it. Yes, currently we partnered up with uh, Keeping Trophy Club Wild with uh, Veronica, and she offers various classes there throughout the summer and a camp as well. And we're also going to um, begin to just spruce it up a little bit more as my thing always says. It's not, it's not a town park, but it still reflects on the town, the aesthetics of it. So what we're gonna do is start dressing it up as much as possible and start promoting it for weddings or birthdays and, and whatnot and start renting it kind of like Harmony Park. The, the, and I'll, I'll 
stop here in a second. But the only thing that I stop I would there. Yeah, the only thing that I would recommend, and I've always been a proponent of it, is to move that guard shack uh, over to the main road, so that people that just want to take that that one little trail that's kind of by that correct that uh, pavilion area, so that they can go in and actually park. Yes. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And I apologize, I didn't mention that, but I did mention that to the core. They gave me those blessings for that. Okay. And I'm working with the contractor right now to give me a quote on removing it. And, and one, it. one final thing, it would be nice to, to know once, once you, since you're able to break down trophy club residents against non-residents, it would be nice to know what that, that breakdown is. And cause I would really like to move to a uh, type of situation where other than the motocross and things like that, but at least there's entry into the park that is, is free for residents. Correct, and that's something that I'm gonna be bringing to park board uh, next week, okay. is uh, right now we're working on the honor system, so we, you're gonna get charged the same price whether you're a resident or a non-resident, but you just have to make that selection. That will, I, wanna, I, I would like to do that for a few months just to see what, our, what, the, what the poll is, and then that should help us a little bit with the, um, with the, uh, the amount of discounts. Uh, my goal if with, with council's uh, blessings would, I believe that we should have residents, um, uh, if you, I'll go out there with your family for in your car, you should be able to go in there for free, right? right? Um, so um, let me just work a little bit on that poll, uh, work on those numbers. And, and I know it, that Park and Rec, uh, or the Parks uh, Board has always talked about discounts for uh, motocross for residents as well. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's also, yeah, but not. Ca Council Member Jensen. Yeah, so Philip was correct. I really want to have bicycles being able to ride out there. What's Mountain the issue? Bikes. They, they, it's a safety issue. So what they're saying is their their priority is runners, right? So you've got numerous runners out there, and then you have a bike going X amount of miles per hour and not being able to stop. It's too wet. It's too muddy. Um, yeah. So, so we have horse trails. We have horse trails as All well. Correct. Removing horse trails and replacing them with bike trails. It, and and uh, Brian, uh, our park or recreation superintendent is going to take a ride with uh, Marshall Creek Ranch next week to start that process as well to see what kind of, uh, what it is what we can do because there are numerous trails for the equestrian, numerous, numerous equestrian trails out there that we can potentially use for other So was uh, other that resources. brought up to the core about doing that? You not yet, not yet. We, I uh, instructed Brian to meet with uh, Chandra, with Marshall Creek Ranch first, see what our options are, and then I'd like to take that information to the core. All right, what does, what does that organization have to do with our options? Do they not lease it from us? They lease it from us, right. correct, so but I'd like to get me, that. That's not the issue. Really, the issue is the core is saying, hey, it's if we core, do correct. this, would you support it? Correct, but at the moment, the core does not know what trails are being used for from them, so that's what I want to get more familiarized first. And the core doesn't know that we have horses? No, they do, but they don't know which trails are being used exactly, so that's the information that I want to take to them oh. after we ride, after Brian rides out there with, okay. with Marshall Creek Ranch. Well, I know firsthand it is a blast riding the horse trails on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So. so. <laughs> No, it's definitely still an option, trust me. I just want to make it more familiarized with. I st uh, and yeah. also, I yeah, I'm a, a supporter definitely of uh, the most discount we can give to residents to get inside the right. park. I'm sure. all for it. Um, I would understand a need for a fee for a motorcycle as a Absolutely. former owner of, of them. I, I get that part of it. Uh, but walking what or just driving your car in there going to the lake, going, having a picnic, Correct. whatever. Correct. It, it'd sure be nice for residents to be able to get it for free. No, no, absolutely. And I have not forgotten about Council Member Kurtz and riding with, with your son, I think it was, and getting kicked out. So I, that's still in my mind. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, no, I'm still working on that. So trust me, just I just need a little bit of time to get with, with, with get more familiar. Rylan? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Just to echo what those guys are saying, I'm also yes. a, a would like to find a way to have a section that's j just for biking, if it, okay. uh, whatever it takes to make it work with the with the, all the concerns uh, that are that are valid, obviously. Um, 
uh, and segment it. Uh, also, I'm, I'm happy to see that y'all found a spot for side by side. That's actually one of the most common what feedback I do get about the park yeah. from residents has been, hey, I wish I could take my side by side out yeah, there. Sure. So that's cool to see. Yeah. I'm a little concerned about the motocross being so close on the bottom there to uh, Churchill Downs. Um, I, I know right the noise, and I'm not a big noise guy. As you guys know, I, I, I encourage noise and activity. I have small children, but my house isn't on this map, and you can hear them from my house. So I can only imagine um, uh, what the it trail might. Trail already exists. Correct. I've been on those trails. So before. that part's already in use. It's that yes, little, that yeah. little sou southern level, light. Excuse me. Excuse it's me. There. Uh, Ryland has the floor. <laughs> I think Ryland it's okay. understands that we can have a conversation. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it, though. So that one is in use already? Yes, sir. And, by, and just FYI, this is the first part of the park that gets flooded. Which right, yeah, yeah. So, so right now yeah. it's been closed for a yeah. while due to that fact. So it needs to be redone sure. Uh, for sure. Uh, I do understand about the noise, definitely. not. Right when they start riding around here, um, there's always another option to just to make it a little bit smaller maybe, you know, and then cut it off here. They are beginners, so I don't know. I'll have to talk to our consultant to see if they do need a size this big for a, sure. as a beginner. Right, I mean, so. and, and I, like I said, I, I just know there are people much more sensitive than I about those things, and I want to make right. sure that they're considered, and I know you guys are looking into that. Um, uh, let me see if I had anything else on there. Um, nope, that was my list. Thanks, man. Okay. So you mentioned uh, the boat dock. Yes, sir. Uh, are they, is the Corps telling you to remove the boat dock? We do not have one um, uh, in place right now. We were thinking about um, placing one right around here, but with the heavy rains, they just don't think it's gonna last. So but there is a ramp there? Um, the boat ramp, correct, sir. So the ramp stays? The, the ramp stays, yes. So you're just talking about a dock that you won't want to do? Yeah, a fishing dock, pretty much. All right. Thank you. You're Philip. Right. Yeah, just one other thing and to kind of expand upon, uh, Eric. I, you know, I've always thought that, and, and a lot of people don't realize that Trophy Club Park goes way over into South Lake and to Whitechapel, uh, to their to their park. And so I've always, and, and Marshall Creek is on TW, Marshall Creek Ranch is on T.W. King. So I've always thought that T.W. King and West should be more for horses, and I'm sorry, East should be more for horses, West more for what Eric is describing, things like that. And I know that uh, we require Marshall Creek to have a, a, a um, entrance uh, there on T.W. King, Correct. and so, if we if we were to approach the core about this situation, people that come to um, people that come to the park to ride horses that park in that little area by Churchill Downs, they could actually be directed to T. W. King and park their trailer and get their horse out and have an entrance right there at Marshall Creek Ranch because we require them to have that open for That's people and to have an entrance into the park. And there's a lot of area with trails and things like that. So that, that may be one thing that, you know, we approach the Corps about uh, <coughs> anything east of T.W. King having that Absolutely. in horses. Absolutely, and, and I agree with you 100%. So one of the things that uh, kind of, this area right here used to be completed, blocked off, and right. since some of the pipe rail fence has just, yeah. yeah so uh, I've instructed staff that we're gonna have to put that Put that pipe rope fence back up there because they're tearing that. Yeah, because that that's where they park right there. Absolutely, yeah. they just kind of help themselves in there. So and 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 a lot of them may not know that they have access to T W King and that that. We would yeah, we just need to promote that right. a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thank you, Alicia. So the fishing dock. So are they against the dock itself or the original plan location? Is there any other option? I don't know which is what's more natural than fishing in, in, in the lake there. Um, we've got motorcycles and we want bicycles and uh, it seems to me fishing is a Absolutely. nature activity. Absolutely, there are various spots and uh, I mean, there's they're all over. Uh, so one of the reasons the zebra mussels were uh, discovered in Lake Grapevine. So another option, another incident, could, what can happen is so if we install a fishing dock, the zebra mussels can uh, attach to the zebra dock, ruin it and we're out of thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of fishing docks. So, 
Um, and then so another, their main concern is, you know, they just don't want something to float away should, should it, the flood you know, should it flood in the future? It's not a matter of if, it's just when, right, so. And then I know we had um, briefly spoken about tent campsites. Were they okay with that? They're, they're, they're okay with pr primitive uh, campsite, uh, uh, overnights, uh, pr 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 over the weekend, yeah. Primitive first. <laughs> oh, yeah, over the weekend, they're definitely okay with that. Primitive yeah, so. yeah. And I do think That's it's a great, great idea yeah. for you to go and survey the trails first to see actually yes. what's being utilized for what before you go talk to them that Absolutely. way you're prepared and you Absolutely. have all the information and can yep. knock that out with them. So thank you. No, thank you. Tim, is there a way to uh, build a trail going down to the beach at Grapevine Lake? This one here? So this one. many, many people have tried to go down there. Correct. The only the thing I, we have to be careful there. with, I, we can do it, absolutely. I cannot label it as a beach anymore because then we're... Oh, right, I get it, but I mean, everybody who knows what it is... Absolutely, they already the know. The problem is there. nobody can get there absolutely. except by boat now. Absolutely. And it's used... Um, I go there by boat and it's, I mean, people really want to use that. Right. And they were always asking, you know, how do we, how do we get here from the park? Right. And so we do own a brush hog at okay. the moment. And so I've instructed staff, once everything goes dormant, let's create that trail okay. once again. And what do we call it, if not a beach? Uh, it would just be a, a, a trail to, towards the sandy, by the way, that's about a mile walk. I know, it's but I mean, a lot of people want to, yeah. you know, a lot of people have a boat, yeah. but they want to meet everyone there yeah. and kind of go back. We can call it Sandy Shore, you know, Sandy, there's, okay. different, <laughs> there's <laughs> different. Right. But that would be great if you right. could absolutely create it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg. So explain the conflict to me. They're allowing you to double the size of motocross but not allow mountain bikes. I mean, they're both motorized vehicles. Is one more dangerous than the other? The, they're worried about the people jogging on a trail and then you have a mountain bike, somebody on a mountain bike riding at a relatively high speed and not being able to stop if they don't see this person. So you're saying the mountain bike would go anywhere in the park, it wouldn't have a restricted area? But there's, mountain bike is allowed in the pavement only at the moment. They're not, they're, they do not want mountain bikes on the trails. Right. The other thing, um, at one time, somehow, I remember hearing, was the Corps opposed to having discounts or free for, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a regional thing and everyone had to pay? Am I? I'm sorry, I, I don't think correctly? that was part of that discussion. Okay. I, I don't know. Tim, that's it. All right, so I wanted to make a comment about the adult beginner track. From my perception and wishes, I would rather isolate that to be mountain bike and not beginner track. Okay. Uh, I think we're leaving a whole segment of the population out by not allowing mountain bike. And so why should we expand something uh, necessarily just to give beginners a chance? So that's just my personal opinion. Definitely an option, Mayor. We can probably, you know, put them up here as well with the others. So. Um, I can bring that up and look at it as an option. Rylan? Yeah, to, to add to what Nick said, I would also look at, <clears throat> and it may be tough since we do, we're going to have to segment, right, because of the bike thing, um, but to find some way to identify a subset of trails that are also accessible via the neighborhoods to the south that might have one, there might be one bike trail down there or, or something like that. Yeah. And, and, and it may even it may even entail uh, clearing a new trail potentially or, or an alternate trail or something like that, which Absolutely. I think it's one of those things to me where if you can, in, if you can increase the potential audience of people that are gonna be interested in going out there, when you give them neighborhood access, it just, you know, it just really goes through the roof Absolutely. as far as being in their mind as an option. So, so yeah, I think I, I kind of like what Nick is saying there and I would take it a step further and, and, and also consider the opportunities um, for for doing that to the south, uh, absolutely here and there, absolutely. And they're not uh, opposed to creating new trails, right. you know, at all. All right. Anybody else questions on this? All right. Thank you, Tony, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, ha have we Philip? have we go back to that? Okay. Have we um, looked into the that ETJ to 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 make that our uh, trophy club? 
like you see Flower Mound going through the middle of the lake, South Lake has part of the lake. I don't see why, I know that they had looked at that at one point. Um, so you may you may just want to explore that. Okay. Uh, making that trophy club so that, you know, if the lease is ever. Uh, just as a comment on that, I thought at one point some years ago we did that, but maybe we, it never got we, filed. I think that you're thinking that they said we could and they were going to explore it, but I think there was. We started the process. I remember that. So it may be something that for David to put on his list. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So council, call your uh, attention to our. Thank you. Thank you. Our October 23rd tentative agenda. Anybody have anything uh, you would like to make sure it's on this agenda? And then I'll get you to go on to pages five, uh, 488, 489, and 490. Uh, first of all, uh, do we want to leave item eight on there so that we bring it back yes. another time? Yes, I'd like to leave it. All right. I just want to make sure that was okay. And, uh, and item 12, we then can remove. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. Update from the associations. Sports associations. All right, does anybody have an item they wish to add? All right, hearing none, uh, we will then move on. Mayor, yes, no. for just a moment. Can we go back to the October 23rd meeting for just a moment? I wanted to mention to council that it would be our intention to try to do a workshop. Uh, we've been trying to work through the issues of maybe doing a workshop, an early start on the second meetings of the month where that would um, entail a little bit of an earlier start to provide uh, a dinner uh, uh, to council. And in this particular case, we're hoping to start that on October 23rd. Uh, try that process beginning at 5.30. And those would be the items, as you see, items one, two, and three, that we would want to start uh, as workshop items. Maybe discuss the sign ordinance, short-term rentals, and then Holly would uh, potentially want to discuss some election issues or we would be willing to entertain any other ideas that council might have. So one of the issues that conflict is that the State Highway 114 frontage road ramp intersection improvements public meeting is on October the 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, at uh, Walnut Grove Elementary School in South Lake. Um, what that entails, council, if you haven't seen this, is uh, they're gonna add feeder roads or service roads along 114 in front of TD Ameritrade on that side of the road. On the other side of 114 also, which there are really is just uh, trees there. And then that service road will also extend on the, I guess that's the south side of 114 along Entrada. And then we already have a service road along uh, Trophy Club between Kirkwood and uh, Precinct Line. And so what's gonna happen is that the entrance and exit ramp that's currently there is going to swap. And this is a public hearing about that. Uh, a gentleman in charge of that project should have for us uh, 10 foot long drawings uh, Monday morning at nine o'clock. He'll have them here at our building to be able to see that better. What that means is that the exit going west at Kirkwood will go away and it will be an entrance to 114 there. So people exiting TD Ameritrade could get out, go on the service road and immediately enter the highway. That means to get off for Trophy Wood Drive, there'll be an exit right past that bridge of Kirkwood and be a fairly um, fast uh, move to the right to get to Trophy Wood Drive. And so that affects our development there, and it's the time to make public comment. So I'm not opposed to the meeting, but I really want to go to that public meeting to, to make sure our voices are heard. Are, are they also doing a turn turnaround under? They are also doing uh, what are referred to as Texas U-turns. So people that want to go back, they're headed west on the service road, can go underneath the Kirkwood and not stop at the light and go back east. And the same thing for west, which helps us. And I've been pushing for it for some time. So if you're headed east, you want to go to Breadwinners, you want to go to uh, 
uh, any other area here at Trophy Wood, you'll be able to do the Texas U-turn to get back the other way as opposed to go through two red lights. So there's some significant advantage for us, but there are also some potential disadvantages. So uh, that's just a conflict that I have for sure. I don't know about other people. I hate to stop what you've got in plans, but that's just something that's there. Yeah, I can't get on any Tuesday here before 6.30 due to my wife's schedule and my kids' schedule. I will not be here. So the hour, whatever hour you guys gain by being here, I will be sure to extend the discussion for an hour because I cannot be here before 6.30. How long Sorry, do you think the uh, that's my life. transportation meeting will last? Uh, well, it's scheduled for an hour, I think. Well, two hours. Two hours, but it typically doesn't take that long. But... Um, you don't have to be there for the entire time. You can go there and immediately make your comments while you're with the TxDOT representations. So they don't necessarily stop it and say, we're taking comment. They allow, they take comment while you're there. Well, can we push our meeting back to 7.30 and those that want to go there? He, he can't make till 6.30 anyway. So we just, like, like he says, you're gonna be wasting some time Discussed again and then rediscussing it again when he comes back in. I won't really be make it that bad, but <laughs> I'm going to just be. Well, you're a little overdramatic, so we figured <laughs> I'd, I'd play, play on that. <laughs> Eric? I fully support doing this. Thank you, Tom, for doing it. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, and I hope it's something that uh, the rest of the councils will support and that we'll continue to do in the future. I don't have a, an objection to doing it and some people not able to make it. Uh, it just does mean that you won't have all the interaction. But I think part of the objective was to have more interaction with staff and council and be able to ask questions, make sure that we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's. So there's nothing wrong with necessarily having it without somebody there in my opinion, but I don't know how anybody else feels. I have I have strong opinions about both of those items. I'm going to be, un, I'm I'm not here to not have an opinion, but I'm also not here to compromise my kids' schedule, and my wife's schedule, and everything I have to balance with six year old and three and a half year old, and um, I can just resign if it's going to be a problem for this body. All right, anybody else? Philip, were you going to say something? No, uh, I I can. No, I, I have. Okay, you were not. I'm speechless. <laughs> All right. All right, so we'll have to deal with that, Tom, and talk about it more later. All right. Uh, I think we've completed all the items on our agenda. Um, in just a moment, we will convene into an executive session. It is 8.27 p.m. Pursuant to the following designated sections of the Texas Government Code, annotated Chapter 551, the Texas Open Meeting Act, the Council will convene an executive session to discuss the following. A, consultation with attorney in reference to breach of contract issues, and B, deliberation regarding real property uh, land north of Highway 114 east of Trophy Cliff Drive and west of the town limits. We are in executive session. Council has come to order. It is 8.58 p.m. and we have reconvened in the regular session item 15. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the executive session. Council, do you have any motions to make? None here. Hearing none, we stand adjourned at 8.59. Thank you. Good night.